Hey guys, Tim Gillette, Rock Around Your Blog, episode number 50. Can you believe I'm on number 50 of these? Woo-hoo. Yeah, and, believe it, and, I, and I started when I was just a lonesome guy on the web and nobody knew who I was in this live streaming stuff. I went to, you know, with this, this lady over here, I guess she is on this side of me. And I was so happy that Vicki Fitz joined in. She's a great friend of mine, uh, you know, joined in. But I see a lot of other people coming in the room because I told you guys it was number 50 and I was going to do something different, something interesting to talk about blogging today. And, uh, I, you know, I, I thought back over 50 of them, how I do. My very first one that I did on Rock Around Your Blog, and I've done other ones that weren't Rock Around Your Blog here on Blab. Just these ones here are classified for bl- blog- blogging or branding ideas with the idea of Rock Around Your Blog. That's what we talk about. And uh, my first one, uh, the person who jumped in the window first was my one of my coaches and mentors, Craig Duswalt, who just was like, he heard... He was on a phone call with me or something like five minutes beforehand and went, what, what, you're doing what? So he went home and contacted my friend Melody Meyer to figure out how to get on. And sure enough, he got on within a matter of minutes of me starting. So I'll go back to my very first one way before we numbered it. We didn't start numbering until we were in the 40s. So um, <laughs> that was a cool thing to happen. Um, and just before we went on air, uh, we were talking, Vicky and I were talking about the, the fact of dads. Today's Today's the day that Vicky's dad passed, and we have to thank God for Vicky's dad because she brought us beautiful Vicky. Who uh, yeah, I love you, Vicky. Uh, I'm so glad you're part of my life. <laughs> you, thank you, honey. You're a great friend too. Not only business stuff that we've gotten to know and things I've learned from you, you are a great friend as well. So um, I, I, I wanted to always be able to say that on air to you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Honey. Without playing a team game or something, you know. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Oh, uh, so today, guys, funny. I wanted to do something special. And uh, again, it's not going to be all about me teaching. It's going to be a discussion. And uh, you know what I mean? Vicky will work into it. But then, guys, if, if, if you have something along the lines in what we're going to talk about today, you jump in, uh, add value. Or if you jump in and maybe I have a question and I can help you get through it. Uh, you know, Craig? Yeah, Craig is a great guy. Um, you know, I can help you get through it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to try to walk you through it on air. Uh, I, I love doing that. I love taking on a challenge. Uh, someone was in one of my boxes yesterday. We got on the phone and like th- this morning and I'm on the phone with her and I'm like, have you tried this? And she says, well, I kind of tried something like that. And immediately I go over to Network Solutions and look up a web name. And I said, this is what you should do. It's like, wow, I never thought of that. I'm like, and I not spent 10 minutes on the phone. I wouldn't have figured that out, but I love doing it because I get in here and it turns my mind other than me just teaching you my notes off of my notepad, which I have umpteen of them. How many do you have of these, Vicky? I got a lot. I have a lot. <laughs> I have a lot of notepads. <laughs> these, these three pages, uh, oh no, that one and the two before are today's stuff I was jotting down researching today. So uh, yeah, I do spend probably about two hours of my day researching something new. And I am in the middle of writing a new book. So uh, trying to do all of this all at once. The new book notes were on that desk over there. So, <laughs> but anyway, I talked about the idea of, of blogging. When I first started blogging, everybody comes up with, Tim, why do you talk to people and say, go to wordpress.com first? And the reason being is most people, they come up with the idea and they won't take action onto it. And I'm just as guilty of what I'm going to share with you as everyone else that I help. And that is, I, but I've got to get this right. I've got to get the the web, the Facebook thing up. I've got to get the right autoresponder up. And I get stuck in the I got to do's. And a month goes by and I have not responded to two emails I was supposed to answer. And I've not gotten on the radio show I was supposed to get on to. And, I'm, and before you know it, you come up with a list of things you haven't done. Whereas I tell people I can go on WordPress.com right now, pick a new blog and start blogging. If I gain a following, it works. If I don't gain a following into it, it didn't cost me anything. Unresponsive to emails. Hmm. Yes, David, I did go look at that email again today. I will answer you today, I promise. <laughs> no. That's like getting um, called out on, in public. <laughs> yeah. I, I seen him in there, so it made me think I don't get to emails. Um, yeah, anyway. Uh, however, I did start res- did start correspondence last night in your show, Vicky, uh, with Yo Pickles. I want to get okay. her on my radio show, and I've just She's I've never great. connected with her. I just I sent a message, and then I went over to Twitter, and I just sent a tweet to her. And figure if she's interested, she'll tweet me back. And she's three hours guy. later, we're tweeting back and forth. So she's going to be on my show. I'm excited about that. David's going to yeah. be on my show. Vicky's been on my show. 
my radio show, it's fun for me. I love it. It's not, shall I say, it's not my biggest business draw, but it's fun for me. And I, it is profitable. So if it's profitable, keep doing it. And if you're having fun, you've got to have fun doing something. So have fun doing it. So absolutely. Um, so I, I, back to why I tell people about doing on, on WordPress.com. Again, if, mm -hmm. it, if it's a tractionable idea, you have blog posts already written. If it is not a tractional idea, you can hit the delete button right away and get rid of it. I have had an, uh, Facebook pages. I've gone through five Facebook pages over the years uh, of different ideas I was trying, uh, different blogs I was trying. Uh, I just shut down two other blogs today that were really not getting traction. So I shut them down and, and, and I'm, I didn't even save the, the content. I think is saved in another file. But if they had no traction, why am I keeping them? Nobody's coming in. All of my tactics are not working to attract people who are followers and readers and subscribers. If I keep putting money down into that hole, it becomes a hole that drags my time out. And again, the most valuable thing is my time. So if valuable things is my time, go start something. I, and I challenge people, go to WordPress.com and start it and see if you can get a following. We can fix it from there. But if you don't do nothing, we can never fix that other than getting you to do something. <laughs> My blog really took off when I got linked and mentioned from a couple of well-trafficked blogs. Yep. And that's that's one of the other things I do is, is I go into is it down, it's down in my list. I want to talk about other traction blogs that I've done that, that I've gotten traffic from. So uh, yesterday I mentioned to you, I actually did start another blog over the weekend that I thought was a great idea. It has one post onto it. And uh, I was talking to Robin Wright who went, I want to know your secret. And I am determined not to tell publicly the name of this blog because I want people in that niche to find me. I don't want people to go, wow, this is Tim's blog. Let me go check it out. I'm building this entirely off of the niche and not Tim's reputation. Is that wise, Vicky, in your word or no? I'd love your opinion on that. Um, well, I think it, I think anytime we try something new, it has merit, right? I'm, I'm not mm -hmm. sure. I'm not sure that's the approach I would take, but I'm certainly not suggesting that it's incorrect. I just, you know, I my my gut instinct might adjust things a little bit. But again, I respect you, Tim, and I'm sure uh, you you've obviously done many things uh, successfully in your life. So I would I would certainly not uh, jump to. I know I hear the echo, but I think it's on his side because I have a headset in. <laughs> and I don't have a headset available. I can, wait a minute. Yeah. You know what? I could. I'm going to pull my adjustment, my volume a little bit. So then I can barely, I'll be able, barely be able to hear you, Vicky, but I can do it. How's that? Okay. Test? Um, I don't hear it. Do you guys hear the echo? Okay. I moved the microphone too. So uh, I have two different angles at the microphone I got to watch. All right. So yeah, Vicky, the, the other reason is, is this niche is not something that really is me, but it's something I've kind of done before. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And when you actually go out there, you realize I can write in all kinds of different areas it doesn't sure. mean I live and experience those areas. Right. Sure. All right. And writing in that niche, I, I'm, I'm doing the blog ideas as, as I'm trying to gain a couple other people to be writers for it. So it's like mm -hmm. I'm starting it to get writers for it. Um, one of the ones I did, I uh, was very successful at, and I just shut it down, was TV Junkie Girl. Oh, okay. Uh, and I just, I, and that one there was, it was just because it was one my daughter wanted to start and she didn't. So I'm mm -hmm. like, I paid for the domain. I'm hosting it. I might as well do something with it. So I started writing blog posts onto it. And recently we shut that one down because it wasn't getting anything. And uh, okay. I believe the domain runs out in a couple months. It's not, I don't have time to watch TV to get the information to, watch this, to do it. Right. And then write I know, it from a right? female perspective. So it wasn't uh -huh. yeah. working for me. That's hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> um, so, and uh, let me pin that question up there. I see questions. Why is my question pinning thing not working? Mm, I don't know. I don't know. Here, Vicky, let me let me let me let me make Vicky a co-host and see if she can try it. Does that work? Do you see it over there? The question. Uh, I do, but I according to my screen, I haven't been made a co-host even if you did. And I and I think I think it's a glitch here because I I don't even think. Let me let me see if I can post it. Yeah, I can't even. Um, this is what it did the other night. I can't post in the chat box either. So uh, yes, remember when my well you were there I think, and then it was like a two minute delay. So I think we're having a, a glitch on um, Blab. Oh, okay. Like if you tried to stop so the recording right now, it wouldn't stop you. Can either. hear me? I hope you can keep hearing me. <laughs> 
We have the glitch didn't stop anybody from hearing or seeing us. It stopped us from the controls. We couldn't tweet out. We couldn't, or well, maybe we could tweet. We couldn't stop the recording. It would just say it was stopping. It, we couldn't post in the chat box. And if somebody in the chat box can do at help and send that for me, then Blab Tech will come in or somebody will come in to help you. But can somebody do that? Because I don't see the chat box moving either. They might. Okay, there. Well, and you guys, can you guys do that? I can't get in the chat either. Yeah. So anyway, if somebody can, then if they put at help in there, but they might not be able to get in the chat either. So you might be kind of stuck. Uh, I typed it. It's not coming up. Bit. So yeah, there's, there's a glitch. Mm -hmm. So let me just keep going with my notes. And uh, basically the question that came up here is if you are, um, if you use the same strategy you used on the successful blogs, why didn't these works? Um, mm -hmm. That I guess was referring to my statement on the blogs that didn't work. Well, one of them is because I'm not a girl. <laughs> <laughs> same strategies, but it's not always the strategies, it's what you're writing about. Uh, mm -hmm. Vicky works uh, with Park Lane Jewelry. If I were to write a Park Lane Jewelry blog, it would fail. I have no experience in that subject. <laughs> All right, what? that is a place that no matter every strategy I have, if I were to write a blog on that, it would not work. A lot of the blogs I go out and I test right now, like I said, I'm testing a niche. I'm testing something because it's something that has intrigued me. I've watched movies onto it, I've lived it. All right, and I want to write and see what I, see whether there's attraction. And if there is, I actually have three people who I'm going to look into make as writers for it. So my, that, that's my concept behind that. Tim, so, I'm going to try uh, and refresh. Yeah, and the, the really thing she's mentioned. Can you hear me? Well, I'm going to try you. and refresh for a minute because you keep freezing, and I and and I can see I have notifications coming up in my box, but that's not changing. So I'm going to see if I can refresh and maybe see if I can I'll be a co-host or not. So give me one second. Okay. Hmm, that's interesting. Okay, so now I am a co-host. Now I can see the question in the box and I can see all the chat that we were missing. Um, you might, uh, yeah, I'm on. I'm I am, gonna, are you your co-host? Let me make sure. But I think so, yeah, because I have the recording stuff. So yeah, you should refresh yourself. And see all right, let me go refresh real quick. I'll be right back. Bye. So, okay, while Tim's gone, um, Hi, Strive to Thrive. How are you, Joe, honey? I love you. You are the bomb. Let's see. Sorry, all we're aware of the struggles. Okay. So um, Blabstead said they're working on the stuff. Thank you, darling. Appreciate you. And um, Jason's in here, and he said that they know that there's problems. They're working on it. And I think that we're good. Okay. Hey, Jason, I appreciate you, man. I like it when you, you're able to show up and help us real quick. I just want to say a shout out to you for that, man. Thebomb.com. Yeah, he is. So, um, gotta love him. <laughs> so we're back. Uh, did we miss anything in um, any questions or anything that were, they uh, they came in while we were doing technical difficulties? I don't think so. Thanks, okay. thanks, Jason. I don't think so. I just we can read the chat now, and I I reviewed yeah. it while you were refreshing, and I think everything's good. Okay. So cool. I see Stan Bush has jumped in the room. Hey, Stan, I always like him. They've got a, they've got a great blab they run every morning, uh, awesome. circadians do. So, all right. And I can only um, stay for about five more minutes. So if you want someone else to take my spot, you just let okay. me know. And um, um, If you're in the chat room and you want to jump in, again, this is I want to make this conversation. Some of the stuff I'm, I'm hearing uh, here. So and Vicky's going to have to jump out. So anybody who has a camera, any of you girls who are camera ready, do you want Stacy? Oh, there you go. Yeah, I got her. Stacy was one of the first to come in. There. Hey, Stacy, how you doing? She just has got the light in a way. She's like, I'll hide. Well, actually, I'm going to try to fix it so you guys can see me better. You can go, girl. I'll That's right, girl. Camera there. So, can you hear me? Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Awesome. Very good. And you know what? Before Vicky jumps out, I just want to give her kudos. Vicky, tell me if I'm mistaken. Weren't you in on? I can't remember who the host was, but. He had Tony Robbins last week, yes? Yeah, Anthony and I, yes. You did a great job. You didn't say much, and that's okay. You you were you were you were on the side, you were supporting him, and you did a great job on that blab. And I just want to tell you I enjoyed that. And I just wanted to give you kudos for just being there, you know, and holding it down for him. Thank you. Yeah, it was a little it is tricky trying to manage 
text messages from Tony's people, the chat box, the questions, <laughs> deleting ones that are inappropriate, and my Facebook Messenger <laughs> where people are sending me messages. So thank you for the kind words. I really appreciate that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, my lighting is horrible here. I'm going to see if I can do something better about it. I usually do this during the day. I haven't done blabs at night and I stand here next to the sunlight, but of course there's no sunlight now. I'm in New York and it's after six, so. Oh yeah, I, that's where my wife is at. She is in New York today and I'm in Texas. Oh really, what's she doing in New York? She's up there, she has a meeting with a couple hospitals up there she had to go do and she didn't want to. She like got notice onto it uh, Tuesday and got on a plane yesterday, so. Wow. Yeah. Well, I'm in Westchester. If she ever comes up north, you tell her to, I'm just a little ways out of the city. Yeah, I think let me I know. Think New York is one of her states. New York and New Jersey are both her states and her territory. So, but. gotcha. All right, uh, awesome. I'm going to switch this question out now. So, Vicky, anytime you have to go, just do it. And, and I'm going to do. The, I'll off. do it now, so I don't have to interrupt you, Tim. Thank you for always being such a gracious host, and inviting me in. I appreciate you, Stacy. It was nice to meet you, and thank you, you for the kind well. words. I really appreciate it. And those of you in the chat box, have a great day, and and um, you know, thank you for for all your support. We appreciate you here in the Blab community. Yep. <laughs> bye, bye, guys. If you guys, follow Vicky Fitch. Please do so. She's an awesome person to be connected to. Thanks, so. honey. Bye. Thank you, hon. All right, so uh, Angelica, I have a WordPress.com uh, website and ultimately want to self-host it to sell my social media consulting services. I also blog and want to generate traffic and revenue from my writings, best tips to get started. You know, Alicia, the first thing you've got to do, you've got to get a lot, get content. I tell people, my, I help my clients get to, try to get to 100 subscribers. And, you know, the, the, I use round numbers, like 100 subscribers, 100 posts. You know what I mean, you know, when you do have a, a idea to get it out there or get your message out there, and when you have a lot of content now about what you're going to teach, how you're going to help people, your consulting services, something that backs up what you're doing in blog posts, and then you've got people who start to follow you, now you can find a way, you, you have something to carry over and know, hey man, this is going to work. Now I'm going to carry this over and make a self hosted site and make this and monetize it. Because that's the thing is, is they're, they're, and I just started to study. Apparently, they're doing some things on WordPress.com to monetize with some advertising, but it's not a lot of money like you can make with affiliate marketing on your own self hosted site. And you could sell a, and put shopping cart integration and everything on your own self hosted site, whereas you can't on WordPress.com. So uh, I've tried it, by the way. So, you know, I've tried it and it usually, it usually strips out my code uh, for anything. So, uh, mm -hmm. but. Doesn't mean you can't keep trying, but you're on a free platform. Um, so, free is there to help you Tim, get started. And that's all. Can I ask you a question? I, I, what's that? Oh, I'm sorry. Tim, I wanted to ask you are, you, are you saying that your blogs, the ones that you are hosting, that you're making money on, are ones that are actually hosted on WordPress.com? Is that what no, I hear you saying? No, they are not. I, I, I started okay, them I on so. WordPress.com to get a following. And then I transfer them over to self-hosted. Got it. Yeah. Yeah. So, and yeah, Alicia, yeah, that's what I don't, I don't like the free sites. Well, here's, here's what free is. Free is a place to get started and never think of it as a permanent home. All right. And I use this analogy in life. Uh, I went through a tough time financially in the, in 2000s, 2005 and 2006. I was homeless. I was living on somebody's couch for free. Too often we can get stuck in that thing and go, well, it's free. Why should I Why should I put the effort to try to build? I went from that. I use that as a stepping stone to save money to go out and on my own. Well, that's what you do. You use the free sites until you can afford to pay rent someplace. And then you pay rent until you can afford to pay, pay for a mortgage. You know what I mean? That's what you do in the websites too. Uh, is Bluehost one of the better options for WordPress websites? Yes, it is. I use HostGator. And if you go to my website, timgillette.com, I mean, I've got a, a, an affiliate link on there for HostGator. If you use it, I get to buy a cup of coffee. Uh, you know, I appreciate that. I, I, I stole that from Bonnie Frank. I get to use it. I get to buy a cup of coffee. <laughs> I I kind of like HostGator. Uh, this weekend, I had a challenge with buying a new web name. And, and uh, other than the wait time to get connected to a, a chat person, they solved it in a matter of minutes. So, I mean, once I got connected to help, they had it solved in a matter of minutes. And I have a plan where I can have unlimited websites. 
So when you're someone like me who tries a new thing every week, and I currently host three different blogs that aren't my own, they are other people's blogs that I host and I run the affiliate links through them and split the profits. I sponsor them if you want to say, whereas I'm the one who owns the site and uh, they give me the content to put on the site. And the agreement is, as long as we're in business together, we split the profits. If at any point in time they want to stop writing for me, I can take the site and, and uh, take this, take it all the site down. But uh, you know what I mean? It's the agreement is, as long as they write content for me, we split the profits I make with the site 50-50, which is a, another money-making tip most people didn't think about when you're in my position, is to host other people's sites for them. So, um, uh, because of some of these blogs, everybody's like, well, you know, it's I, they're not big sales sites, they're, they're blogs. And it's not hard to run a blog as long as you're not loading a lot of video and stuff. So, um, happy 50 shot, thank you, so. Um, so, I mean, in the beginning I talked about it in here, guys, was I start out on WordPress.com because I believe in getting content out before you actually, you know you're going to do something with it. Then you transfer it over. Bluehost, as what you said, Bluehost, I don't know about Bluehost, so, but I heard it's good. HostGator is the one that I use. Um, those are the two that I recommend, the two I, I kind of see, I know a lot of people who work with. Outside of that, I don't know a lot of people who work with. I know people who are doing, I know one or two people who are doing um, shall we say they're working with, uh, you know, like GoDaddy and stuff. So, uh, Masad, you're going to have to fill out your profile in order to get in. You have, do not have to fill out profile. I don't know if people want to fill out profile. Um, so Tim, I, I yeah. want to add something. I use HostGator as well and I've used mm -hmm. it. Oh, I have, um, echo there. I'm sorry. Let me turn it down a little bit. I don't know if you guys are hearing that echo. Um, I, don't I use HostGator as well. I've been using them for several years. I have clients who use them also. Um, I personally don't like GoDaddy, um, mm -hmm. but I've used other ones for other clients as well. And I think they're all pretty much the same in the end, um, you know, in terms of just hosting your site, having continuity, um, and, and having, and then of course, having different servers that they can go to if something goes wrong. I find customer service to be very helpful with um, HostGator, like you said, as well. Um, I just don't like GoDaddy and, and, and their ads and just the way that they market just doesn't suit me personally. Um, so I just wanted to add that. And what I thought would be a good idea is, you know, you were talking about starting by using the free one, and I think that's a good idea. But for those who have heard that they should, automatically go to using ultimately like you said you want to be using when you host yourself so that being the case for those who can afford to do so you would recommend that they go ahead and start with the dot org site if that's with the, the wordpress if they can afford to do so if they can afford to do so and you know you're going to do it all right you can build a wordpress website all right <clears throat> self-host it using wordpress as your platform um but i mean you, if you know you have like me i have a business outside of this. And actually I have uh, my, my one business actually has a website. I knew that was going to be a business. So I went over there and created a site, right. you know, do it no matter what the business is. Already, I've already got that done. I'm not blogging on on a regular basis. I'm talking for those people who come up with, I think I'm going to start a business. I think I want to start a blog. I maybe want to write a book. You're not sure. Go prove you can do it and prove you can do it for free rather than spend what is it? Seventeen ninety nine for the website. Anywhere from five to ten dollars a month to host it. And then you you want to do it right, so then you'll go out and you'll create, have somebody create the the graphics for you, and spend another, you know, eighteen hundred bucks. Uh, and then you'll need a, a you know what do you say a, a, a autoresponder system, so you'll buy a, a mail thing like you know Constant Contact. All right, you got the site up, you've got no content onto it. It looks pretty. It's paid for. And it's not making money. And if I told you all to do that up front and you went and did all of that stuff and didn't write a lick on there ever, first thing you would say is that guy Tim Gillette just told me to spend money, didn't help me do it. Someone made the comment, right. I, I, I spent money on GoDaddy and I didn't do nothing with it. Imagine right. if you did something with it. And I started my blog and it's kind of hidden now because I have to go in and take a lot of stuff off of it. But my original Rocker Life Coach blog was started on wordpress.com. We had over 300 articles on there before we transferred it over to a self-hosted site. 
again, and I had a huge following on there before I even went to the self-hosted because I didn't know what I was going to do with this. I was still figuring Tim out. And I want you mm-hmm. before, while you're in, if you're in my, and I'm, I'm telling this from the perspective of where I've been, if you're trying to figure you out. Don't spend the money where it's not going to give you a return on an investment. Get the message written down, get a following. Now we can actually go in and see how we can con- convert that and monetize it. So. I just thought of another like idea plan. too. Yeah. Tim, if they have a main domain, they can also create a subdirector in their main domain um, mm-hmm. and point directly to that, create a landing page and go directly to that and use that as a way. Because like you said, once you have a uh, one domain account with HostGator or anyone like that, you can uh, create subdomains and have multiple domains listed uh, there. So they could create a, a subdomain even or just another mm-hmm. page that they point directly to. Um, yeah. I do want to say when you were talking about HostGator, the one thing uh, when you do host multiple sites there, depending on which plan you have with them, when they do an automated backup, the backup is very limited in terms of the size. So that's just something mm-hmm. I just want to point out since you mentioned it, that I've run into before with clients and sometimes myself is just to not assume that everything is being backed up because depending mm-hmm. on the size of it and the plan you have, the backup size is sometimes limited. Yeah. We have ours backed up. Uh, we have another, we have a backup buddy, I think it's called that my, my web girl put in and mm-hmm. it's got a system that backs it up on a regular basis. And, yeah, I've gone in and because I've had to go in to trim stuff out because of my back. My backup got so big, I had too much bulky stuff in there. It was weighing it down, and I try to clean it up and divide up my my sites so each different site is backed up. My main site though has like seven or eight domains pointing to different places on there. Wow, so I have probably about seventy five on my main site, timgillette.com, and timgillette.com points to my original Rocker Life Coach. So you know. I have 60 some hidden pages you can't see. That's you can't right. find. Sure. And the reason is I do that is if you go to it, it has a uniform look and I create everything, even though I'm sending you to it. If you go to rock around your blog, it goes to a back page on that. The reason I do that is now you look at it. And if you want to find out anything else about me, you click the home button up there and you go right into my regular website. And that's what I want people to do is if they, even though they're done filling out the form, they go, oh yeah, let me check out more about this guy. Oh, he's got a blog. Oh, he's got, I've already got you connected into the site. That's why I do that in different ways and different site, different back pages that are in there that you don't even know it until you go in there. Uh, I have a lot of them that have uh, hosted videos. Well, not that they're not hosted on my site. They're hosted, but they have a video player into it from another site for all of my newsletter videos are all back on my uh, they're all back on the on back pages in my website, and it keeps That's you smart. on my site. You know, it's is how mm-hmm. I'm doing it. And I also now though with my um, looking at my my stats, is I can tell how many people who uh, have opened up my newsletter and have gone to read the video. Because if they right. may go to the video, then it tells me shows me that they linked out of the video to answer the survey. I can now see who is saying, yeah, Tim, I watched last week's video. That was great. And I see nobody clicked on the video. I know you're lying <laughs> to me. That's right. You know, it's funny. Some I was doing that today. So I don't know if you saw on Facebook, it's Friends Day. So Facebook mm-hmm. showed everyone how they created a, a Friends video and you could share it. So I shared mine. I saw a couple and then I started liking people's friends videos and I didn't even watch them. So that's funny what you just said. You know, I just clicked the like button just to let them know I supported them. But truthfully, I didn't have time to watch them all. So that's funny. No, I mean, but, but that's it. We've gotten into a world where, where, you know, uh, I, I, I used to see people like I had informational products and this one here was just a cover from it. And, uh, it was saran wrapped and I'd get them back going, you know what I mean? A saran wrapped. Like, oh yeah. I really like that. And saran wrapped still. Well, if you liked it, wow. why don't you open it and read. So. Wow. So Listen, Sylvester, Tim, can I, I ask, ask you something? To have a profile. If you want to get let in seat, Sylvester, you're going to have to keep fill out your profile. I'd love to ask you some questions about the topic you have tonight about starting a blog and uh, building a, build a following, making money. I've been online and on the internet for 
many years. I, I'm not as young and hot as I look, I like to say, and I've been around for a long time. But one of the things I haven't done, even though I do have some affiliate sites, is I really haven't focused on a blog as a way to attract followers and, and make money around the blog itself. And that's something I'm looking to do now, actually, very seriously. So if it's okay with you, I didn't know if you had a particular direction you were going in to share this information. But since I'm here, can I ask you some questions about it? Mm -hmm. Yep, let's do it. Awesome, good. So first of all, I'm someone, as I said, I've been around for quite a while and I have uh, expertise and interest in, in, in a few different areas. Um, but as far as the uh, blog itself, how would you suggest that people make the decision about what their topic is going to be? And then how specific, I know um, uh, that question came up on Frank's blog yesterday, something about the peanut butter. Uh, if you're interested in peanut butter, do you talk about it on your marketing site? Um, so I'm just curious your thoughts about streamlining the topics and the ideas and then also, well, look, look, answer that one first, and then I have a, a follow-up question. But streamlining, streamlining topics and ideas and picking a topic as a main topic, what would you say? Streamlining as far as uh, the topics like your blog, to your, your, your post topics or your blog theme, blog niche? The overall topics, the whole overall topic for the site, in other words, does it need to be that you're there because you're talking about marketing or does it need to be that you're there because you're talking about wellness or, you know, in my case, truthfully, I'm known as the maximizer, which means from my perspective to increase or make as great as possible. So really mm -hmm. I help people in, I am a business uh, consultant and a business coach, but really it, my belief and my calling is about helping people to do best and better wherever they are and whatever they're involved in. So I have an interest in some things in terms of good financial uh, uh, literacy and, and good decision making in that area, business growth, of course, personal development. So I'm trying to, so, so that's just to give you a little more specific. So in terms of coming up with a topic and determining how to present that, even if you have ideas about you know, various uh, things you want to talk about, what would you suggest? Mm -hmm. uh, see, I, I'm the first thing I always try to get people to do is, is use your name as your topic, first of all. Uh, and it's one of the reasons why I now more market more Tim Gillette than I do Rocker Life Coach or Rocker on Your Blog mm -hmm. because I want to be the, the, the topic. When I'm working with clients to try to help them design their ideal subject, all right, who they're going to reach and how they're going to reach them, how they're going to help them, uh, I actually go into their story. And, and centralize an idea down for a blog so that uh, you have a, I want to call it a system, not necessarily a, a name, but a system. Uh, right. And some of them are like, we, we create some of them like, you know, one of, one of my guys in this, uh, he was in philanthropy. He helps a lot of uh, nonprofits build a, uh, build a better system to raise money and raise awareness for their whatever they're trying to do. So we created his system is called because he always is working with a group of people, not working with one at a time. We called him the philanthropy mastermind. So that's what his nice. uh, that's what his thing is is called is the philanthropy mastermind. The um, the the next one we actually work with is we have someone who actually works in holistic health. She wanted to actually come up with uh, you know she she had this plan down like these nine things she did to help her lose weight. Uh, you know, be in better shape, be in better health, all that stuff. And we, we put the nine points down until we called it the prioritize your health system. And she took the word prioritize and made an acrostic out of it for, with her points. So, I mean, you take something like that first. So that gives you a driving point. You know where you're going with the whole idea with behind the blog. Mine is rock and roll keys to business success. I use music, rock music motorcycles to help mentor entrepreneurs on how to stand out as leaders in our industry. I use rock and roll songs titles or something around a rock and roll song, right. uh, which is like my book. You can always get what you want. All right. My second book was called taken care of business, just like the song. That's where you actually do something along a niche way like that, that you're helping people, but it's unique to you. My unique story is I love rock and roll. I look like a rock and roller. But I can't play you music, do. but I can ride a motorcycle. <laughs> music and motorcycle. Awesome. That's how you do it. So you've got to find something. I, and I tell people, go into your story. What do you love to do? 
What have you done in the past? What have you? What do you want to do? And I've used their stories in the past. One of my my clients is is the weight loss engineer. She was an engineer by trade, and she goes in to help people on engineering problems. She owns the patent of this 4G network on this phone. She's an engineer wow. by trade. That's what she does. But she now is into holistic health because of having to change her own health to take care of her body and be better in better shape as she got older. So she decided, well, I've got to take care of my health. And her engineer mind went down to, I'm um, from India. The best way to take care of my health is a vegetarian diet. Right. Now her coming to me and saying a vegetarian diet is the best thing is not always the best thing. So she realized each body type is different. And that's why she gotcha. went into gotcha. a weight loss engineer. No. Um, so, I mean, each just, each person has to have their own system. All right. And if you're not going to have, uh, you, you know what I mean? You're not going to come up with your own first. All right. It's not, it's not going to go. Go with your own name if that's what you have to do and start talking about your journey and let the system develop. Because once you right. do find your place, it's your name. You don't have to change the name onto it. You understand what I mean? Right. I, I agree with that. Yeah. And I've, I've had my own name domain for a number of years. And I'm, I'm pretty well branded um, and I have some different mm -hmm. programs. And so, no, you, what you're saying definitely makes a lot of sense. So let me ask you this. So that's the front end and that's the idea. Can you give us some insight uh, from the back end in terms of ways that you actually monetize? Now, I know that, you know, obviously you, you, you can sell programs, you can sell products, but give us some ideas or maybe some good tips about you know, I would love to know um, something that you do that's unique and, and that actually generates income from that blog other than just sponsorships. Yeah, so that's the first thing people think of is sponsorships or they think selling ads. I don't sell any ads on my websites, none whatsoever. Um, and a great question. I will get to that in a, in a second, Angelica. So um, the ways, the systems that I've worked to monetize is affiliate marketing is how I went. In the beginning, because yeah, I, I, I did not, yeah, I, I did not have a product yet, but I wanted something in there to help bring a little bit of money up to make money onto it. Now, my radio show is sponsored. I have commercials onto it. I've sold the commercial spots. I have someone record it uh, and I put it all in there. And that's part of it because I'm dealing with audio. If you guys are here on Tuesdays for my radio shows, I do it on here on Blab. You'll see my radio producer will be in the square next to me. And on commercial breaks, we're just sitting there quiet and she's playing the commercials on the system. That's sponsorship. However, the, the, the affiliate marketing is something that's very easy to get into. It's nothing more than than uh, taking, I take hyper wor hyperlinked words in my site. And if you see the words in blue, and if you click onto them and you go to a site and go, oh, I like that idea, let me buy that. I get a portion of the sale. Amazon is the biggest one I use. And if you go through my sure. site, you'll see a ton of Amazon stuff on my blog. And the reason I went with Amazon, because Amazon has so many different things. I'm not getting high Absolutely. percentage rates, but I'm getting something. And again, right. if I got a thousand things paying me a, you know, five cents a piece, that's better than nothing. Um, sure. I use a lot because I talk about rock songs and sometimes I can't find the pictures. Amazon has a music program. So basically I go into the music program on there and I'll, I'll grab the music and like the Eagles. I talked about the Eagles last week. I put a picture of an Eagles album. If you click on the Eagles album, you go to Amazon. If you buy the album, sure. I get some money. If you don't buy the album, I don't. No big deal. Yeah. You get money and the Eagles probably don't get any money at this point. Who knows? No, I, they've got to get something. Trust me. The, I, I, I've watched the Eagles too long to know they get something. Really? So. Hey, Tim, um, I've got to grab my plug, but I'm not going anywhere. I'm going to step away from the camera to plug right. the computer in. I'm going to pull this other question up while you're doing that. Sure. So this one here was brought up by Angelica. Is it wise to get your name trademarked? I am not a trademark lawyer. So let me say this on trademark. Uh, your personal name should, you know what I mean? Once you get the .com of your name, you own it. You should own it. All right. No one's going to come after you because it's your name. You have a it was really kind of trademarked when you bought when you were born. It was put on your birth certificate. No one can sue you for using your name. Um, however, there's different reasons you might want to have it trademarked. 
talk with a trademark lawyer on that. All right, I'm not I'm not good on that. So, um, when it comes to uh, you know what I mean, the trademark process. I mean, I, and again, I have somebody who I deal with in Dallas. So, I mean, I I don't know, but it's it's not something I go into. So, let me pull this card here. What Jordan was your James. answer what though? Your, what was what was your answer, Tim, to whether you think they should trademark their name? I I think they have. If you if you own your own name, you were born with it. No one's right. going to come after you. I, I you're saying you're using your own name. They can't. Exactly. You're yeah, I, I think so. you're right. What is your favorite moment in your time blogging? One of my favorite moments is, so you know, and uh, some of you may have heard this story or not. Oh, Jordan, oh he's, he's calling in. Hold on a second, Jordan. Let me bring you in, buddy. Um, my favorite moment in my blog. As I wrote a blog post in 2011 or 2012 about entrepreneurs I, I wanted to meet. And one of those entrepreneurs I wanted to meet was a guy named John Schneider who founded Papa John's. And I wrote oh, a blog nice. post about it. And in 2013, when I was redesigning my website to the, what it is now, the Rock and Roll Keys to Business Success, I'm on the phone or on Skype with, with my, um, my web girl, Cynthia, and my cell phone rings. And I look at the phone like this, and I go, I don't know anybody in Kentucky. Just like my phone rang a little bit ago, and it was a number I didn't know. I don't know. That <laughs> I don't know anybody in Kentucky. And I didn't answer it. Wow. The voicemail said, Tim Gillette, this is John Schneider from Papa John's. I read what you wrote about me online. I'd like the opportunity to meet wow. you. Greatest moment in my career as a blogger. All right. Did you wow. meet him? Yeah, I did. Yeah. Wow. Awesome. Oh, and one of the reasons I liked him and what he did was within 10 minutes on the phone call, he was jumping in trying to help me do something was uh, my story about him was the fact that he got his car back after years of he sold it and and, and got it after years. He got it back. And I said, man, I said, I had a 1977 Monte Carlo that I'd love to find if I ever could. Yeah, I had it in in, in a couple of shows when I lived in the Northeast and. He went through all, I mean, on the phone, all of the ideas we could go through to actually find my car. Wow. Didn't know me other than reading an article. That, In 10 minutes, he's on the phone trying to help me. So Nice. That's anyway. awesome. That that shows the power of uh, that every six, you know, person theory where, you know, somebody knows somebody who knows somebody who knows George Clooney. Yeah. And how yeah. amazing this uh, era we live in, how we're connecting. Oh, my God. I mean, that's just one heck of a story. Yeah. That's awesome. That's it. So that's, one what, of the, uh, that's my favorite. That's it, buddy. So uh, you, what? Uh, I might have missed this portion of uh, your talk, but what is your uh, – why did you originally get into blogging? Okay, I didn't share that today, but yeah, my story, when I originally got into this, I, 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 I used to be in the car wash industry until 2004. I sold my car wash in 2004, and Zig Ziglar was a client of mine. And I, I oh. sat down with Zig, and I said, I don't know what I'm going to do next. And he said, Tim, you'd be a good speaker and a good coach. And I believed him so much, I went to work for Starbucks for five years. And uh, it wasn't until 2009 where I was going, okay, I'm going to do something about this. And I went from being a respectable looking human being to somebody who didn't shave and had long hair. And I said, okay, Zig, I'm going to do that speaking thing. I don't know what I'm going to do, where I'm going to go. And a friend of mine on Facebook had posted something about this website he created a blog on. I wrote an article on called WordPress.com. So I went over to WordPress.com and I was like, create your own create your own WordPress. So I did created it and put it up and that's where really? it started. And, and it was March of 2010. Hey, March is a great yeah. month. I was born in March. So, you know, let's say, <laughs> let's say it's the yeah. best month, best month. It is. So, Hey Donald, so, welcome to the room, buddy. Oh yeah. Hey, uh, I see her. I know Donald. Well. I was on great crowd. A couple of ago, so, uh, who was um, actually? Did you uh, see the uh, the the blab that was just going on with Martin? Uh, can't pronounce his last name. Uh, the man who's been on the the news about marking up his uh, that drug that he purchased. Uh, it was all over CNN, NBC. Uh, he uh, anyway. It was a uh, uh, the quality of that blab is nothing compared to uh, this one. This is actually very informative. 
So thank you. Uh, that's what I try to do, Jordan. I try to I try to help people with a blog and a brand. That's and I and I'm not here yeah. for you to create the next Nike brand. If you can get anything yeah, out of here I today, mean, is that you are the brand. Yeah, and no. that, I mean that's I've right. I've done uh, some branding work, but blogging is something that uh, I've never been able to understand enough to the point where I feel I can I can uh, take my personality and 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 put it all full force into a blog. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean, what was, I guess, what would you give as a piece of advice for finding your voice in blogging? How would you go about finding uh, that voice? Go over to WordPress.com, start your own site, and go write a blog okay. post today. Uh, let me see, what should I pick out for a topic for you today? Mm -hmm. I want you to pick a topic Excellent. to talk about your three favorite hats in life. I am good. That's your assignment. I like that. Okay. I like that. And when you say hats, you don't mean literal hats. You mean hats, roles that you wear. Take in life. that subject that whenever you, you want. Your three favorite hats. I well, like you got to call the blog post. Three favorite hats. I yep. think I'm and just going to journal you on that back, topic. You got to come too. back and tag me on Twitter and post it yeah, on Twitter because I'm going to come look at it. Nice. I, you know what? Actually, did I at here? Hold on. Make sure I have you followed. Um, three favorite hats in life. That's a good okay. one, Tim. Yeah. So Donald yeah, you Trump should. Uh, Stacy, yeah. please, by all means, uh, share that same uh, topic. You know, feel free I, to. Jordan, people come in and ask me things like that all the time, and I always give an assignment, and I always do it random. And here's why I do three it: favorite. random. Why? If I don't do random, if I do the same thing every time, then it's going to be all over the place. But if you do, I give it a random one. Right. It is so neat to read the random one on my Twitter later. Uh, I, sorry, it's just, Tim, I told you to do this. You did? I don't remember that. <laughs> it wasn't about Tim. It was about you. You did it. I still use a uh, pen and paper, too. I, uh, I'm taking these notes down. Jordan. There's something Jordan. about it, you know. <laughs> <laughs> but you have the legal pad. I just have the uh, boring 99-cent, you know, spiral notebook. <laughs> Jordan, I got more of them. I got more. No, oh, gee. Is there a library around there full of just, like, boxes of those? <laughs> oh, hey, wow. Tim, okay. can I ask you a question? Yes. Have you ever lost any of your notebooks? Are you ever afraid of losing your notebooks? Yes, I am. As a matter of fact, the front of every one of my notebooks, it says in the front of it to kind of to deal with honest people. It says uh, the notes and ideas inside this book are property of are, are copyrighted and property of Timothy Gillette and X2 Investments LLC. Please send it back to and it has my mailing address in there. Is well, there going to be a oh, oh, sorry. Sorry. Stacey, no, no. Go please. ahead. Go ahead. I'm going to grab something. I'm going to show you that will help with that. I'm going to grab it while he asks his question. Sure. Well, uh, actually, first I was going to say a joke. I was going to say, uh, 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 oh, she, she, she took off the time for a second. I think it's stable. Uh, uh, if you hit, if you hit uh, the thing on her. Oh, yep, yep. You know. Um, yeah, no, I was going to say, is there going to be a portion where you tell us you're the heir to the Gillette Razor uh, fortune? <laughs> Uh, I am not. I'll never do stand up. <laughs> Does Tumblr count for what, Anna? The random homework assignment, Angelica, was the random three homework assignment hats. was write a blog post about my three favorite hats. And that could be literal or, uh, or you could make it about roles in life, as uh, yep. Stacy um, pointed out. Yeah. So, because oh, for a blog, I am a you can go blog before. wherever you want, hon. Uh, Angelica, um, uh, what sort of blogging do uh, you do uh, yourself? I wonder. I wonder if she uh, uh, could respond. Yes, I will read it. If you actually post a blog and you actually got the um, uh, Angelica, you, if you write a blog post about that, you have to go and post it on Twitter 
and tag me in it so that I'm I find it in my mentions, and then I will go over and read it and comment on it. What it uh, you know as a, a uh, we're going to call you a certified life coach of sorts. Um, I'm not a certified life been, coach. <laughs> <laughs> what has been one of your most frustrating things that reoccurs while dealing with people? Um, that that are are kind of taking your lessons and uh, learning from you. What's uh, one big thing that, uh, especially for newcomers like me, what's something that frustrates you about um, about that process? Is there something that we do personally? I mean, like naivety or uh, um, lack of uh, follow through or something. Um. Okay. Uh, one hey, of the things says, that really sorry, frustrates that was me, it's not, this is not just clients. This is everybody. This is as a, as a human race, it frustrates me. I watch people who will repeat the same mistakes over and over again and then come back to you for advice when they didn't take your advice the last time. Exactly. <laughs> and you give me advice yeah. again. All right. And I had an instance today that hap this happened, guys. So, you know, a very personal family instance. Where someone yes. who I've given advice on something, the same thing over and over again, they ignore what I tell them, and then yeah. when they fail, they come back to me and say, well, why can't you help me? Wow. wow. And it hurts. You it hurts know, and it bothers me, okay? When you come to me for advice and then you don't take the advice. You know, I actually, I was, uh, years back, I was going through a uh, messy uh, kind of separation with um, my fiance at the time. And uh, I remember going and seeing this uh, therapist a number of times. And finally, one day she said, I'm just going to stop you right here. Here's my issue dealing with you is that you know exactly what you need to do. You know exactly mm -hmm. what you're doing wrong and you continuously, you know, uh, refuse to address it and you come back expecting me to give you some sort of valuable advice. You know what you need to do, but you just won't do it. And that really stuck with me. You know, uh, it, you I just basically what you said, it, it rings true. My wife's text texting me, asking me about this very situation. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, geez. Talk about uh, coincidence. It's not about, so, and it wasn't Tim. my wife, by the way. Not my, it wasn't my wife and I just know the problem with the person we're dealing with. So, so uh, I'm share going to, I have an, I have an appointment in a little bit, so I'm going to have to hop off. But before I do, I wanted to share something with you because we were talking about the writing. I'm a tech yeah. girl and I love gadgets. So I wanted to share something with you. I have a pen. It's called a live scribe pen. And actually I'm an affiliate yeah. of this, but I'm just sharing it with you guys. No link going to be included. Yep. This pen, you can write in the notebooks yeah. that come with it. And so basically you use their pen and everything that you write on this pen, whether it, and they have various notebooks, they even have stickies you can order, little flip notebooks. And basically everything gets uploaded to the internet. So it's saved. Yeah. So that you don't lose it. And even if you lost the written notebook, the information would still be online. So it's a great tool yeah. to use for somebody who does a little of writing or journaling. I was going to ask yeah, you. Uh, um, I actually had a friend kicked sorry. out of a seminar for using that. So be careful where you use it. Yeah. I oh, guess, because of the recording. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah, you don't respect, have to record audio. people's boundaries with it. But you so, don't have to record I, audio with it. You can just record what you're writing. It just scans what you're writing. You don't have to be using the audio option. You can just scan what you're writing so your own notes are saved later where you can access them online. Yeah. Yeah, I, I do have a question concerning that uh, because I've thought about buying one since the first model came out. Um, it was so interesting to me. And I know uh, I'm I'm going to be 24 so i'm still relatively young right um and so i know a lot of college students who actually use these and uh i i have yet to uh um actually ask somebody and i want to ask you what 
uh, is it that great? Is it really as effective as they they uh, they sell it as? You know, kind of. Advertise? It really is. It's a great tool to use if you interview people. It's great if you're a student and you're using it in school. Mm -hmm. Like I said, for journaling, writing business ideas down because I've all, I yep. also write a lot of down. As I said, it's nice to be able to see that if you're taking notes and you want to pass it on to a team member who's working mm -hmm. for you, you can t write those ideas down and then it goes right to where you want it to go. They can access it. So it's really cool. It's a cool tool. But anyway, listen, no, I, I want, I know that Tim you. wants to get back to the topic at hand. Thank you so much for allowing me to be a part of this tonight, Tim. I was glad I could help out and just uh, learn from you. Thank you so much. And it was nice talking with you, uh, Jordan, as well, and everyone. Well, thank Yeah, no, thank you so much. Thanks. I'm actually, uh, one last question before you jump off or get back to doing uh, all the amazing stuff you're probably up to. Um, uh, how much, uh, how expensive do those journals run? And I know I, I'll do a Google search, but uh, I mean, how many do you go through? Journals are inexpensive. The journals are inexpensive. I have different notebooks for yeah. different things. They're re relatively inexpensive and you can print yeah. your own paper actually. You just copy the dot paper and you print it and you can use that. So it's cool. Well, thank you. Thank you're you. welcome. For Take care, Tim. Feedback. See you soon. Bye, Stacy. Thanks for Bye. stopping by tonight. So. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Bye-bye. Yep. Yeah. And I'm going to, Jordan, I'm going to, I'm going to have to wrap it up here in five minutes. So, uh, yeah. Well, was, was there other questions well, you yeah. had, bud? Um, give me a second and I can, I'll definitely have a couple just, uh, I'm making some notations on a few things. Um, a while back, actually, I remember, um, and this is leading towards a question. Um, my uh, uh, my mother had come to me and said she, she you know she's actively involved in the church, right? And uh, she's also lived sixty years of her life, and mm -hmm. so she wanted to kind of do a blog. So I helped her come up with a name at the time called Blend of Life because it was a number of people that were all older and from different walks of life that were doing this blog. But it didn't succeed. Uh, they eventually kind of, let's just say, ran out of fuel, you know, kind of just uh, lost ambition. What um, what would you, is there a tip that you could give to uh, help condition yourself to always, uh, or to keep the spirit going when you start a blog to keep it up? Is there a tip that, uh, you know, kind of like working out, you know, keeping your, your strength up? How, uh, how do you... Uh, inspire yourself every day to at least keep going and, and yeah. make it a, uh, yeah, sorry. In the beginning, I had to make it a habit. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? I had to, I had to go random and it's, I did the same thing when I went into discipline is right. And, and Hannah, I don't know what, I thought they helped us earlier. I don't know if somebody else had a help problem. So I appreciate you jumping in Hannah, but I don't know what else, if somebody else typed help, but yeah, they came in earlier and fixed everything. So, um, when I, um, when I uh, uh, started even here on Blab, I gave myself a challenge to get into it and learn it real quick. And my mm -hmm. challenge when I started was, I'm going to be on a, I'm going to be a guest on a hundred people's blabs, and that hundred yes. people's recorded blabs, and that became a ch within 30 days. And that gave me a challenge, it gave me a time frame, and it gave me a number to go for. So what I had to do now is I had to learn to go into blabs and build relationships to say, yeah, Tim, come on into the window. Because what yes. some people have done since we've been in here. Um, while we were in here, they, they jumped in and immediately they clicked the seat to try to open it and they have no profile filled out. See the private man who's up here and you, Jordan, both of you guys, you sat in there, you were in the conversation for a while. Then you clicked in to say, Hey, can I join the conversation? Your profile is mm -hmm. filled out. Now I bring you in. I had to do the same thing. I had to set myself a goal and be realistic with the idea that I'm here to contribute to their conversation, which both of you have. So that's why you are in the window not just jump into windows to be in windows. Yes. So that became a challenge. You know what I mean? It's, and I challenged myself to go out and find a goal to do it. Well, I did the same thing in a blog. My first three months in the blog, I'm like, I'm going to write a post a day, five days a week for a year. And I did it. And then I went really? for two years. You know what I mean? So it's like I had to set something to get going. Was it easy in the beginning? No, it wasn't. The first couple of months, it was tough. I got to come up with an idea every day. So <laughs> it, it becomes sort of a, a good challenge. Hey, uh, welcome, uh, uh, 
private man. <laughs> private man. No, I'm a, I've been a blogger for about five years in a particular niche, and I got a, I, usually I get emails from folks who want to start a blog in the same niche. They all seem to have the same problem. It's getting the writing down. You know, writing does not come naturally to a lot of people. Uh, okay. And Tim, you established a goal for yourself, which is good. Um, but a lot of people would rather market. They would rather network. They would rather, uh, you know, put together affiliate programs, that kind of thing. But but I've found over the years that without solid content and, and consistent writing, especially if it's a text-based blog, uh, it really it, it, it's hard to maintain about after three months. Um, and after three months, because, you, you know, in the beginning, you don't get a lot of traffic. I mean, it took me a good three months to finally get any traction. Um, and that was that was a that was all the writing that I did. Now, I'm blessed. I come from a family of writers and I'm a professional writer. But, you know, a lot of folks in the same space that that are in you know that what I'm doing, which is not related to marketing or anything like that. Um, they give up after about three months because they're only getting, you know, a couple hundred page views a day, maybe a hundred page views a day. Yeah. And they were expecting to, to drop on the scene and, and make a big splash. Uh, and that's why I asked the question about, and, and Tim, you sort of answered yourself to a certain extent, but how is it, you, you know, you got to come up with say 500 to 750 words per blog post. It needs to be relatively unique. It needs to address a particular niche and a particular pain point how is it that you find those ideas i know how i get my ideas because i'm in a particularly rarefied niche not a problem uh mm -hmm. but you seem to be in a niche that that is that is i wouldn't say overwhelmed but certainly is is pretty flush with a lot of folks having kind of the same things to say what do, what do you do in a case like that tim i look for a lot of all my ideas around rock and roll songs so I'm always looking okay. at what can I can do convert and teach from a rock and roll song. So if I'm listening to a song on the radio today, and I, you know I hear it for the first time, and I go, "Is there a business lesson? If I took the title of this, can I create a business lesson? Can I create a story, a business lesson, and a call to action on it? If I can't okay. in my niche, thrown away. And okay. how many songs are there out there? There's millions of songs. No, no, I understand. Okay, so that's that's where you get your inspiration from. All right, well, yeah. that's fine. I mean, I'm just yeah. just thinking that a lot of folks are into sort of the marketing and the business game. I'm not. So yeah. I'm. What I do is relatively straightforward, uh, and it's a small niche. But I mean, for a lot of the folks here, it looks like I'm looking at the questions and I'm looking at the other folks in the profiles. It seems that a lot of people are in the marketing advice game. They're in the develop a business game. You know that kind of thing. And with so many people in roughly the same space. I mean, you've got a nice differentiating thing going on. I mean, how do you, you know, number one, how do you find the differentiation? And number two, how do you actually create the writing? Because writing does not come naturally to a lot of people. It's no, very it hard. I mean, you know, banging hard. out 750 words, it's not an hour, it's a day. Yeah. Right. Um, and hey, hey, in the I beginning, it was okay. a lot for me to do, man. It really was. It, it took me hours to do it. Now I could, blank, I, could, I could put out a blog post in 20 minutes now. When okay. I started in 2010, yeah, it took me four to five hours to come up with that 500 word post. Okay, you know, it's it, and it, it takes time. You've got to be disciplined what, uh, to figure out what you want to really wear, and you really got to find a voice in your in your niche. If you don't have the voice, you're not going to come up with it. You know, I I, I created the ideas over time. I, I in the beginning, I didn't start off using song titles. I started okay. off just with my love for rock and roll, and I just started writing ideas that came to my mind. You okay. Know? Now, how many how many words do you find for a good length for a blog post? I'm curious. I want to bounce it off my experience versus what you. Yeah, what I want to know had. what you do first. Oh, okay. Um, I average between 500 and 750. Perfect. Yeah. See, I I'm the three to 500 is what I recommend people to get started. However, I tell okay. people if you can re write engaging content, in other words. Everybody can't get enough of what you write. You can write up to seventeen or eighteen hundred word blog posts. I know people who do it. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, and but everybody's if, like, if you're not engaging, they shut off yeah. after five hundred words. Yeah. So. Yeah, that's and that's and that's been my experience too. I'm heavy on the text, uh, less on the graphics uh, or pictures. Um, mm -hmm. I do know that the pictures tend to get a, a more response. Um, the most I've ever gotten in one month in terms of page views, and I'm still using a free WordPress account, by the way. And I've been, you? you know, I'm, I'm I'm very familiar with that. I haven't monetized my blog uh, for a number of reasons, but um, not you know, everybody the most has I've to monetize done their blog. That's so you know, it's that's perfectly that's fine when thing, he's doing. Yeah. You're allowed to. 
Right. And so I get, you know. yeah, I get my credibility in other ways. Um, and I generate some revenue in other ways. Mm -hmm. Uh, but what I've, what I've discovered is, is that given the niche that I'm in, the most I've ever done in one month was a hundred thousand page views. And that was the exception, not the rule. Usually I'm averaging about 50,000 a month. Uh, yeah, on, that's a good general. Work, yeah. Okay. I guess, I don't know because I haven't done the metrics to compare. Uh, yeah. And since I'm not monetizing, then it's, you know, I'm not, I'm not that hung up on, I'm more hung up on the demographics of who's reading it and who's commenting. Um, I live for the comments um, because that, that's where the discussion, you know, goes. And, and I recommend that a lot of people, you know, if they've got good comment and that comments also shows the, the, num the level of engagement. So yes. if I'm only getting, you know, 10 or 15 comments per blog post, I realize that that particular topic is not as engaging enough as it should be. When I get 50 to 100 comments, then it's like, oh, I'm on to something here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's and I've it. seen and a that's, lot of blogs. That's where you should be measuring, by the way, is your comments, not your page views. Right. And what I try to do is I try to get ratios of page views to comments and also comments to subscribers. And I look for patterns in that regard. Mm -hmm. uh, and and, and that, that helps me gauge, is this an engaging particular post is this working over time and there are times when i haven't posted anything for a month or two and my fortunately my page views have maintained consistent they go down of course but it never it's never dropped below average of 600 a day yeah. um I'm, I'm lucky in that regard but i mean the writing for me and for all the people who i talk to um that the the the, the hard part is creating that content they all yeah. want to do the yeah. marketing part of it, which is a lot more fun than actually sitting down and doing the writing. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And you found the theme, and yeah. I guess that's that's a good way to handle it. Thank you. Yeah. So, and and guys, you know, I mean, I really, I have to, I have to close up. I was supposed to go on to another uh, uh, meeting with somebody here, so, and I do have two phone calls to make to get yes. caught up. So, well, thank you. Um, I want to thank both of you, Private Man and Jan Jordan, for jumping in. Uh, all right, Stacy jumped in, Anytime. and uh, Vicky was here in the beginning. <laughs> Uh, thanks to the Blab team who yep. came in today uh, when we had uh, problems and helped us fix it. I appreciate that. Um, yes. Everybody's made comments. I appreciate all your comments, all your questions today. And, um, you know, uh, we do this. This is episode number 50. Yep. I've done 50 of them. I'm going to keep doing them as long as I can help people uh, uh, build a brand, tell their personal story, and write it down on the blog. I'm going to keep doing them until you guys don't want to come hear them anymore. So if you want to find more about some of the classes yeah. I teach on to them, I'm going to put the uh, the link over in the page, over in the side here. It's well, rock around your blog. Uh, if I can type while I talk at the same time. <laughs> I, yeah, I know. Rockaroundyourblog.com will take you to my webinar page where you can basically sign up and get on the list so you can well, notify when we do the classes on these. So I appreciate you guys coming in here. And I have you followed. All, All right, right. Thank you, Jim. Follow me here. Follow, Private, follow Jordan, Jordan uh, and follow both of them. Catch up with them and what they do uh, and come back yeah. again. We'll be back here tomorrow night with another one here. It'll be a little earlier because I got a basketball game tomorrow night I'm going to. So have a great night, guys. Hey, everybody, great. we'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.